teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path. And because of mine enemies, deliver me not unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are, ris are risen up against me, and such as breathed out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 14 and last. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, just a small change in the order. Uh, so I'm going to ask uh, uh, Stephen Ford uh, to come and he is going to give a reflection of the life of Louis. Please uh, welcome uh, Stephen Ford, brother. He's the man who has done extremely, exceptionally well in putting this all together. So please give him a, a, a louder. Yes. Yeah, I'm millennial, so I'm gonna. Oh, baby boomer. Good morning. Like, I want to thank you all for coming in. I want to thank uh, Minister Greens over there, Paul, you know, I want to send a shout out to um, everyone in Jamaica, Jamaica land, you know, Louis Love, Louis Drop, I had a different team. You know, thank you all for coming out. Uh, this is more of a reflection uh, than a eulogy. You know. Give me a little bit about Louis from a brother's high, you know, inside the family, back doors, you know. Louis, uh, you know, before I speak on Louis, I'd just like to uh, give a shout out to my mom. This has been, uh... thank you. You know, the burden has been really tough on my mother. She's 84 and you know, she has to, Louis is the second child she's burying and a grandchild. It all started in 1997. When my dad died, he was 65, a year younger than Louis. You know, buried, Pops got buried twice. You know, we buried him here and then we took his body to Jamaica. You know, buried him. And uh, 10 years later, my sister, Tina's daughter, Pam, she passed, 2006. She was only 44. She had a a disease that is called uh, neurofibromatosis 2, that's NF2, and uh, Pam died from it. Um, it's a terrible disease. It got no cure, and um, it's not considered uh, by the Food and Drug Administration to be a cancer, so no research should go to NF2. Call them to find out about it today, and get the same news from about when Pam died in 2006. Nothing has changed. No refund, uh, no research is going towards NF. I had two children, Tashin, Sheldon. If you have NF, the chances of your children getting it is 50-50. Uh, so Tashin got it. And she died just recently, 2006, 10 years after Pam. You know, uh, oh, that's, yeah, do the math. Um, and to think, I'm like really good at math, you know? Yeah. But anyway, she died, um, you know, 2016. That's, that's the mystery. It's 2016 she died. And um, she was only 28. She didn't get to 28. Oh, November was going to be her birthday. And she died February. So she was really 27. And then, um, not even a year ago, her favorite uh, niece, Crystal, husband, died. He was 40. 
he died from a lung, you know, disease. So it's been really rough on the family. It's been tough on my mom. She's been in her 80s while all this is going on. And then Louis comes to Canada, 2009. And, um, you know, happiest day in our life. Prodigal son is back home. You know, Louis comes home. When Tana sees Louis, she lights up. You know, every, hey, I tell you this, every parent's have a favorite child. Oh, you think I'm gonna say it's Louis, right? It's me, no. No, but, um, you know, Tana won't admit this, but we all know. <laughs> we know Louis is her favorite son, you know? And I know this is like, well, my mom is strong, you know? She survived through it all. She's a prayer warrior, Christian, you know? And God is what was bringing Tana through all this. And all of us, you know, I just single out Tana because you're not supposed to bury your children. Your children's supposed to bury you, you know. So she's a strong black woman, spiritually strong. So put your hands, you know, together for my mom. All right, all right, all right. Enough about Tana. Let's talk about Louis. Oh, Louis, Louis, Louis. You might know Louis, you know. Teddy Buckshot, Ox, you know, Louis Rankin, people in New, uh, New York, you know, Sweetie Daddy, you know, number one DJ outside of Jamaica, you know, Louis live in New York, you know, and, uh, but Louis has been talented from he was little, you know, as a little boy, well, I'm little still, but Louis is like bright, you know what I mean, like intelligent, you know, book smart kind of kid, you know, he's a uh, Little bad boy was smart. Was it a boy that died down of school, mostly, and he's the test. You know what I mean? Teacher be complaining about Louis. You know, we have, we have a teacher in St. Thomas, Mr. Carty. He only teach the top of the class, them. You know, go to public school and pick out the top three, top four out of the school in grade, in a sixth form. Them time they have farm, last grade. And, uh, you know, he had Louis. Louis was his best student. But every day he come complain to Pop, said the boy bad, he's not doing work. And, you know, that Louis is just naturally bad, you know what I mean? I tell you Louis, but you know Louis said that uh, he's uh, from Rockford. In born in Rockford, Warwick Hill. You hear me, man? You see Louis? Louis born in St. Thomas. No more clan. I bought Louis by the run with my little boy, that town. When you see Louis, for years it seems like, you know, one day it seems like a year anyway, back then, you love little brother, you know? And Louis run with that town, find some family in the Rockford of Warwick Hill, and jam them. For years! Come back to the country now, about 15 or 16. I mean, you know, the Louis running about 12. Come back to the country now. King Stonian. The one that can't talk to him about the country, you know what I mean? All the crazy, oh, Louis, Louis. Like, really? You know what I mean? So you come back, you come back to the country, you know, to, um, you know, it's true with the Kingston thing. He's King Stonian now. Got the mark on him, you know. All of us are glad Louis come back up there, you know. But uh, just so happened that as Louis come back, not even a year or two, my mom had to leave. Um, she passed the nanny course, and them time they have to do a little program to get nanny, become a foreign, can be a maid, and so, you know, Tana passed the course. What? Tana, you're big. And then, you know, she fired. This was about 68. That would make Louis, what, 53? I don't know, man, 15. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. Louis started taking care of us. Louis was, like this guy, this Louis is destined. He's just a special person, special character person. He started taking care of us, him and Pops. But Pops was a truck driver. So Pops is never home. You know, he's gone all the time. So Louis is like mother, father, big brother, friend. He was everything. And the best cook ever. Like, all right, take a joke. Who watched rice on the internet and go viral? You know, like, like doing, doing those things that like, it just blows up, man. He just he was natural. He was a natural kid, you know. And growing up in St. Thomas, you know, when Louis left, like this was our family life with Louis. You know, all the siblings. There's uh, seven of us, you know. Um, we are, no, 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 like you know, very close, you know. There's Louis. There's um, Jati, Clarence. There's my sister Cherry, you know, Vinita. And then there's me, Steadman, Arrow, Steady Rider. And then there's uh, Gus. And then Pam, who passed. And then Jean, you know, we're like a wash belly. Just as bad as Louis, this young Jean there. Yeah, man, but, uh, you know, he was taking care of us. So think about it. A little 15 year old, uh, the only difference with Canada and Jamaica, when you're 15 in Jamaica, you're not an animal 15, you're a big man. 
And this is crushing, right? But you know what? The Bible said in the midst of life, there's death. And we just take it casually until it hits your family. And you really realize, uh, hey, this is serious stuff, you know? So to my brother, you know, may your soul rest in peace, you know? I love you, we all love you, and God love you. And now you're in eternity, you know what I mean? Ain't nothing better, you know, to live eternally with God Almighty. Leonard Ford, a.k.a. Ops, a.k.a. Teddy Rockshot, a.k.a. Sweetie Daddy, a.k.a. Big Youth, a.k.a. Leonard Ford. And um, just before I go on, I, I have to touch on this. I never talk about Louis coming to Canada. Louis came to Canada in 2009. He voluntarily left America and uh, came here. It's like a destined trip he was on, you know? We didn't know that Louis was going to die. I didn't know. Then I didn't know. Nobody knew. One person knew. Well, probably everybody and I ever know. You know what I mean? Like, because of Louis. Hey, Louis coming up, guys. Hey! No, but um, only God knew that Louis was going to go. You know what I mean? But the things that Louis was doing while he was here, really is, it's like he was just paving the way. He came and he hang with all of us individually, you know? Our house, he would come and jam. We can have, you know, his last few days, he was with my son, Shadim, you know, out in um, Pickering, with me, you know? Spend time with Cherry, the Dread, me, Gene, you know? He was, on a, he was on a mission, like, you know? The things he said to my sons, his last visit there, is like, wow. I was just watching the videos, and I'm going, wow. He didn't even know what's going on, but he was giving these last minute life instructions to the boys. One thing with Louis, Louis loved Pitney, you know. At um, 63 or 4, Louis started a new family with Jules. You know, he's got three kids, three baby girls, beautiful little girls, you know, with, with, uh, with Jules. You know, he started his life, things started happening again for him. But you know what? We don't write the script. We can plan the script. But like um, V's mom used to say, man, I plan, I got a wipe. The answer is with Jesus, you know? It's curious soul. If you notice, Louis has a rude boy, DJ. Him ever, ever, ever a talk about God. Ever. That's not a joke thing. He's always talking about God in his music. You know, because he knows. It's Father God that controls everything. It's Father God that does everything. And it's Father God that takes out Louis. Thank you. sure he has a lot more to say, right? Thank you very much, uh, Steds. Thank you very much. And by the way, that fine lady standing, who was standing beside him is his wife. So just in case, if you're out there, put your hands together for V. Thank you, V. Great. All right. Uh, when somebody is visiting your house, especially when the person is doing so much to change the society, change the world, it is so important that we I'll uh, give honor to such one at this time. I'm going to ask you just to stand. I'm going to ask Honorable uh, uh, Olivia Babsey Grange to come at this time. Please stand and let us just welcome her. We want her to feel so much at home. So I just want you to know that I do watch uh, TVJ because it is so important. Jamaica is my motherland, and I always want to see what's happening out there, and I do see you a lot on TVJ as well. God bless your heart. Thank you. Welcome. God is good? All the time. All the time. God is good. Bishop Walker, my respect and to other members of the clergy and to the wonderful choir. Good morning. On behalf of myself, I'm here in person. I had to be here. I want to say on behalf of the government, the people and government of Jamaica, deepest condolences to Lurie Rankin's mother, to his siblings, and to the entire family. I'm going to ask you all to give his mom a big round of applause. She's the champion. 
I also want to express my condolences to the music fraternity, to the entertainment fraternity, and to all of Louis Rankin's fans. Leonard Ford, a.k.a. Ox, a.k.a. the original Don Dada. I must say that his untimely and tragic death reverberated across the international arena. Everywhere you had Jamaicans, right across the world in the Jamaican diaspora, as well as outside of the Jamaican diaspora, his passing came so suddenly, so suddenly. And so, as we came to the sudden realization that we lost a stalwart in the music and film industry, and a champion of the grassroots people, it was very hard to accept. I can only imagine the unspeakable pain and shock felt by those closest to Lori Ranking upon hearing the devastating news. And I'm certain that you have many, many, many unanswered questions. However, it is my sincere hope that you will get over his untimely passing, that you will ultimately experience a peace that surpasses all understanding as you come to accept in your own time that he's no longer with us. It's going to be very hard. It's going to be very, very, very hard for all of you. But I want to assure you that his spirit will live on. His spirit will remain stronger than ever. Church, and I'm saying church, because you are in church, death is inevitable. And it is not easy to remain calm and composed and accept it when it comes. But as difficult as it may be to confront the emotions that ensue with the death of a loved one, I believe that we should use the occasion to celebrate, celebrate the life of this icon who was well-loved and respected by Jamaicans and non-Jamaicans alike. And I want to use the opportunity to say with you that every one of us here this morning has a number and our number will be called. So I want to say to you, live your life, live it well, but live it right, and be ready when your number is called. So for those of us who knew and loved Louis Rankin and who had the privilege of working with him, you would have been drawn to his flamboyant, charismatic, and infectious personality. Louis was a people person who fed off the energy of those surrounding him. Yet he had the uncanny ability to ably express himself without reservations. He very much epitomized the old saying, what you see is what you get. And this was another endearing quality which also earned him great admiration and respect. Louis said it the way he saw it. He was a true Jamaican who remained loyal to his roots, and he was a proud ambassador of Jamaican culture. As many of you already know, he was a highly accomplished artist who masterfully sang or portrayed aspects of our culture. He possessed a natural, a very natural talent for the arts, having made a name for himself on the reggae and dancehall scene with popular hits such as Typewriter and Get a Soldier. His music resonated with many within and outside of Jamaica as his lyrical prowess was unmatched and also served as inspiration for young and upcoming artists. I will never forget the days when Specialist and I managed Shabba Ranks. Shabba was signed to Sony Epic and Louis Rankin was signed to Warner. Not surprisingly, with this wealth of talent, Louis Rankin made an easy transition into acting which propelled him into greater stardom 
with the release of the movie's belly in 1998 and rerun these streets in 2014. And I want to pause and use the opportunity to recognize Paul Campbell, who is here with us this morning. And I have to just mention, when Paul starred in The Lunatic, I was responsible for the promotion. And we pulled off an unbelievable feat. Paul lived on the streets for months so as to understand what it was like for those people who lived on the streets, who everybody said they were mad. So Paul lived with what we would call mad people for many months. And then when the movie was going to be premiered in Jamaica, we really wanted to make the front page of the star. So we set an appointment with a madman. So the first day, when we set the appointment, we went. He wasn't there. We eventually found him, and we set another appointment with him. Four o'clock that afternoon at the corner of Waterloo Road and Hope Road. Paul and I went there with the star photographer, and there is no, nobody is there. And we're looking around for him, and we just hear somebody come out of the corner and say, boo. <laughs> so after that, he sat, and they had a conversation. They had a conversation, and we got the photograph, front page star. And it really boosted the movie for the premiere. But, you know, I could go on and tell you about a lot of stories, or conversations I've had with so many people who live on the streets, who people think they are mad. But they are more sane than a lot of us here this morning. And they only live on the streets because of circumstances. But Paul had first-hand knowledge of what it was to live on the streets. So the raving reviews Louis Rankin received as a result of his persuasive depictions added more and more accolades to his professional repertoire and reaffirmed that he was a star. There was no doubt there's a saying, every nigga is a star. Well, we know this nigga was a star. <laughs> so with such an illustrious career, the original Don Dada, his contributions will live forever in the annals of Jamaica's entertainment history and heritage. There is no doubt in my mind that you're all deeply hurting, but the support you have demonstrated by being here this morning is testament to the love you had and will forever have of our deeply departed brother. Let's treasure his memories. Those precious memories, those pre precious moments we all shared with him. Remember those moments and he will forever be with you. He has left an indelible mark that is far-reaching and we should honor him not through mourning, but with jubilation. I personally will honor him. We established last year, was it last year or this year, in Reggae Month, we established what we call the Hall of Fame and the Reggae Icons Award and the Gold Reggae Awards. And I will be nominating him for one of those awards when we celebrate Reggae Month next year. So I can only hope that you will take comfort in the fact that Louis Rankin is now in the hands of our creator whose everlasting love knows no bounds. So as much love as you have for him, you will beware that love is greater. And I want to take the opportunity to say he has been sent home in fine style. You all see those beautiful ladies from New Heaven? You know Louis Rankin love that. Look at them coming in. Such beautiful ladies. And I want to commend Shelly and Shari and the beautiful team and the staff that has done a wonderful job in sending home Louis Rankin. Please give them a big round of applause. Bishop Walker, they are fantastic. And so as I end my remarks, which I was going to say my few remarks, but there weren't that few. I want to end by saying that the government and people of Jamaica commiserate with you during this time, saying this to the family 
and fans and be assured that you're all in our thoughts and prayers. Louis Rankin told stories through the look on his face. He did not have to say a word, but you could tell the stories. You could read his face and you could understand what he was saying. Miss Lou, our folk hero, at this point, would say to you, I express myself, and I just want to leave you by saying, walk good, and make good duppy walk with you. But what would Louis Rankin say? Walk and live. God bless you all. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, uh, Praise Cathedral worship uh, team is coming now. And by the way, Bishop just told me that this is their partial choir. This is just amazing. I mean, this is just sounding incredibly. So put your hands together and as they come and uh, uh, sing for us one more time.
Wasn't that awesome? Wasn't that awesome? That's really. If you don't have a home church, you better come back here tomorrow, right? You will get the full choir tomorrow, by the way, right? Okay. okay. Well, uh, Bishop is coming, and I'm sure he has some great, awesome words for all of you, and more importantly, for the family members. Please put your hands together for Bishop as he comes. What a way to remember a great Jamaican Canadian, a great person. Go ahead and first let me give honor to the mother, the matriarch, a strong woman, a godly woman, a pleasant woman. I think we need to honor her. Now, I think she deserves better than that. Go ahead and honor her. I personally want to salute Stedman first. You meet this brother and you meet a great human being. Very respectful and caring. God bless you and the rest of your brothers and sisters. To the rest of the family members, may the Lord give you strength. We are honored, very honored. I'm not sure if I can do a double, but we are honored to have in our midst this morning a very distinguished Jamaican, one who serves well and serves her country well. As a matter of fact, a former Canadian. Did you give up that citizenship? Maybe she still has it. But uh, when I greet her, I said to her, welcome home, because as you know, her earlier days, she's still in her early days, she spent it right here in Canada. But she's now serving the government with distinction in Jamaica, and that is no other than the Honorable Bobsy Grange. Give her a hand. <laughs> Paul, if I would ask God to switch, I would ask him to give me your voice. Because you open your mouth and you command. Um. <laughs> what a voice. But overall, and so sir, we thank you. Thank you for your contribution to the arts. And it is people like you and Bob Marley that have allowed Jamaica and to be the great country it is. It's a Around the world, we hear your voice and see your face, and faces like you. And coupled with that is somebody that we're eulogizing today. These are great Jamaicans. I want to recognize the greatest, and, 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 and uh, I want to say this, when we decided to, to build a funeral home, we wanted to build something that you would be proud of, you black folks. And, I, and, and don't stop me, let me say black folks, because we have nothing. When I came to this country and um, uh, our churches were mostly in shop fronts, and I said, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to build a cathedral that when we have a function, we entertain the prime minister here not long ago. We, we want to build something that we, because it's not mine, it is ours, that we can and be proud of. And nobody say, oh, time is up, get on out. And so we built Praise Cathedral. And then we decided that not only we want to build Praise Cathedral, we wanted to build something that we can pass on our spiritual roots and belief from the cradle to these ones because the best way to train a child is when they're young, pretty young. As a matter of fact, if you understand Jewish education, it officially starts at five years old. And, um, and so we decided to build Arch and Bloom Academy. Today it's a gold star. And so if you're looking for a place to put your young one, we have 
have it right here at Praise Cathedral. But then I said to the men in the boardroom, we're going to build a funeral home. And we want the best people to be the, the ones in charge and to run it. And I can tell you this. When we built New Haven Funeral Center, not a home, and you have been there, you realize it's more like a boutique style stuff that you can all, it is yours. It is yours. I used to watch people go to funeral and 1,000 black people crying and a few white people going out with all the money. And I watch, I, it's the truth. The black folks are crying, nothing against white people. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying it's time to empower our community. And, and so any, any white person get offended that you're, you're an idiot. Because that's not what we're saying. We're saying the black community is always at the bottom of the ladder. And it's about time we all grew up together. And so we built New Haven Funeral Center. So when you step in there, we can serve. And people say to me, are these people the same way? Is this the way to behave? My friends from the States, and I'll take them there. And they said, man, we have never seen such class. What service? And so we decided the best in the business is no other than Shelly Challenger, who is the manager, who is the vice president of, of New Haven, and then the general manager, Shari, and they have the best staff. They, they are the best. Look at them at the back, folks. It, it is so the change and make you feel good. We are proud of them. If you're proud of them, go ahead and give them a hand. Louis, you would be proud. You would be proud. But as we close off this morning, because we got to get out of here, let me take five minutes, if that long, and ask you, what have you contributed, or what are you contributing while you are given a space in time? I hear people talk always that you're wasting time. Uh, you're wasting time. And I, I would say, no, you're not wasting time. You're wasting you. Because time is infinite. There's not a time when time was not. And there will never be a time when time will not be. Time will always be here. But what have you done with yourself? What contribution are you making in the space that you're given in time? Because all of us have a window. It is a reality that no man lives forever unless you're the infinite God. It is a reality. It One of the in inevitables in life is death. A man must come to his end. And some as babies, some are stillborn, some as babies, teenagers, middle age, old. But we are all going to come to an end. But what are you contributing in your space of time? You know, the other day they had, as I said, I'm speaking to people in the diaspora. And the other day, they celebrated Heroes Day in Jamaica. And I had the privilege to go back and look at some of our great heroes. And one that we don't talk about very often until we drive into Montego Bay is Sam Sharp. He was 31 years old. 31 years old. He was taken out of this world at 31. But Sam Sharp continues to live. Even in his death. Think about it. 31. How many years realistically with his cognitive skills all of there you would say about six. So you get him to leave university and then he would have given about six of his years to life. But those years counted. Because he made Jamaica a better place. I thought about Bustamante, 
Buster Manti spent 17 months in prison. A lot of you maybe didn't even know that. But he made Jamaica a better place. Paul Bogle, that quiet deacon, the one who hardly would speak, but when he saw the, the suffering and the oppression, he decided, look, I cannot keep quiet anymore. And he was put in the gallows. Hang. But he made a contribution. Jump over. Martin Luther King, 38 years old. But he fought for the rights of black folks. And today we celebrate him. The question is, what are you contributing to life? Louis made you laugh. What are you contributing to life? But more than all, my friends, all of our contributions sometimes will, will vanish and people will stop talking about us. But when they stop talking about us, how are we going to live? Here's what the Bible says. From the greatest knowledge that has ever graced earth. And why do I say the greatest? Because the Bible said Solomon was the greatest and the wisest. And in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, in verse 13, he says, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. The whole duty of man, everything you do is to fear God and keep his commandments. That is our duty. And show my brothers and sisters, as we lay our brother to rest, I pray if you leave with anything, leave this one thing. At the end of the day, I am not created as a statistic. I'm not just a statistic. I'm here by God's divine purpose. And my purpose is to fear God and keep his commandment. The word fear comes from a Hebrew word which really means to bring serious reverence. Acknowledge him that he's God because only a fool say there is no God. And I wish if I had time to extrapolate in some of that. Only a fool says there is no God because the man who opens his eyes sees on every side a magnificent, a mystery that no human mind can plumb. And that could only be created by the divine. Almighty God. And so as we go to the graveside, as we lay our brother to rest, it is silence. He's saying, I'm gone. My days are over. What are you going to do with your life? Fear God and keep his commandments. May the Lord richly bless you. I'm going to ask the New Haven staff to come and they're going to give us instructions. Look at them, folks. Take pictures of them. Video them. Put them on Instagram. Have you ever seen anybody so beautifully and colorfully decorated? Man. Wow. Give them a hand. Good morning. On behalf of the Ford family, I'd like to thank everyone for attending today's service. As we conclude the service, we will be traveling to Glenview Memorial Gardens for the interment. The route we will take will have us leaving the church, exiting and making a right onto Mill Creek, a right onto Derry. We'll travel up Derry until we get to Torbram, where we'll make a left. Then we will make a right onto Steeles, a left onto Highway 50, and a left into the cemetery. Once we arrive at the cemetery, we will be going to the Garden of Peace. If there is anyone traveling ahead of the funeral procession, I would ask that you leave the way to the grave clear so that the funeral fleet has access. 
For those of you who are traveling in procession with us, our staff will be handing out funeral flags for you to place on the exterior of your vehicle so that we have access to the flags at the end of the burial. As we depart the sanctuary today, we will be honoring Mr. Ford. We will need to depart the sanctuary quite quickly. As we depart, pastors will lead us out, followed by the pallbearers who I would ask to come forward at this time. Then the casket, then the family will follow in behind. Anyone else in terms of congregants, I would ask that you remain in your seat until we have passed you by and then you can file out. Immediately following the burial, there will be a time of fellowship to celebrate Louis' life at Clearport Banquet Hall, which is at 65 Clearport Boulevard. All are welcome. The reception begins at 2 p.m. To Sedman, Mom, the rest of the Ford family, on behalf of myself, Sherry Yearwood, Shelley Challenger, and the New Haven family, I would like to thank you for allowing us to serve you. Can I please ask everyone to stand? sweet a sound that saved a wretch Lord let me oh I once was lost but now I'm found